hey girl hey welcome back to my channel it's your girl misha thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review we are back y'all with a brand new review for ready to love make a move season one episode five if you are new here then welcome i give lighthearted reviews with a little bit of laughter and a little bit of shade and a whole lot of detail if you're back for a second or third time then welcome back y'all please don't hesitate to like comment and subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content listen y'all before we get into anything i just want to say thank you all so much for supporting my channel for searching for my channel when i get lost in the algorithm for actually watching these reviews consecutively 10 to 14 thousand of you always come through for me to watch these reviews and i greatly appreciate it so child now that we got that out the way let's get into it when the episode first opens up ashley doing all that talking but decides to keep cursing girl gone i can see that he was not that excited it's like he really wasn't giving but i don't think she noticed so we're just gonna leave it there over on the other side sharice and maurice are sitting on the porch honey it's exactly where he belongs, honey because y'all know he don't say nothing so sitting in that rocking chair rocking back and forth that's where he belongs she feels like maurice wants her to chase him and do <laughs> baby and do he wants you to chase him in his steve harvey suits and his stacy adams honey yes he does maurice not even trying his case he's a lawyer he ain't even trying his case he rests his case he said listen she gonna choose me because why not and boy goodbye she finally wised up and made a move in another direction. Bye, Ashy. Because I feel like Maurice was nothing but an opportunist and he ain't fooling me. He's like, yeah, she gonna miss me. No, you're gonna miss this free meal and you're also going to miss being on camera. Go on, give him his close up, Mr. Director, so he can go. You are not ready to love. In the next scene, it's the next day and Ashley is doing a crab boil for the ladies. Ashley be cooking it up. Let me say something to you, Ashley. Let me just speak directly to you because I know you're having a hard time this season. Everybody's coming down on you and your Edward scissor hand nails and just saying that you're over the top and your team too much. I just want to say something to you. Okay, you are a catch. I know you probably already know that. So you're probably like, girl, shut up. But I'm going to tell you anyway. You're smart. You're degreed. You have several businesses under your belt with your family. You can throw down in the kitchen. You're pretty. Because I think that pretty is the ultimate compliment. I know beautiful is like, oh, she's beautiful. She's gorgeous. But being pretty is just so simple. I don't know. It's just something about you're pretty. I know this right now is sounding like the help. You is kind. You is smart. You is important. I mean, but you are. You're all those things. So I just want you to know that you're a beautiful lady that has a lot to offer somebody and you deserve. Okay. Shout out to Mama D. You deserve someone that's going to want you. That's it. That's all. Now let's get back into the mess. So she up there cooking it up and they eating the crab boil of it all. And so Sharice tells everybody that Maurice is eliminated, but he's still calling. Sir, you're not ready to love. Go home, Roger. Like, go. Why do you keep calling? She says she told him she gonna sleep on it. So then we also find out that now Donald knows how to use the phone. Donald is calling and texting and sending smoke signals and everything else. And I was just like, is this allowed? Well, this ain't ready to love. But still, like, are they allowed to talk to the men that they sent home? child i don't know what's going on honey but these men are giving hell no we won't go <laughs> baby they ain't going nowhere and that's just that on that moving forward so tamika must have smelled the food honey because she done showed up hey girl she was like oh it smell like new orleans in here that's ashley over there throwing down so she tells them she invited the ready to love alumni to check on them you know it's supposed to be their friends but these are people from past seasons and all of the ready to love alumni gets there and seeing Liz just made me think that I would have loved to see her on here in place of Sharice. Nothing against you, Sharice, but I really wish that Liz could get a second chance. If they do a second season of this, why don't we give an opportunity to Liz? Now, Jason did her wrong. Now, y'all tried to tell me. Now, I can admit when I'm wrong. Y'all tried to tell me. Y'all was like, Misha, something is wrong with Jason and you just don't see it. And I was like, the only thing wrong with Jason is he trying to decide between Kyra and Liz. That's what it's giving me. But y'all tried to tell me and then here we are. Y'all was right and I was wrong. Moving forward. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. But I wish that Liz would have gotten another opportunity. Anyway, not Sharice bringing LJ, honey. I guess she didn't click with any of the other ladies. I mean, LJ was a nice guy though. So we have LJ from Miami. We have Liz from the Houston season. We have Stormy, who was the DJ on season one in Atlanta. 
And we also have Camille and Camille's many faces that she likes to make. Child, this is a fool. Camille and Zadia are back together in the next scene, ready to wreak havoc. Uh, Camille, usually you get it right with them wigs, honey, but I don't like this little wig. It's like the part ain't parting or it's parting too much. It's got too much powder in it. It's something, it's something. It's giving heavy. It's giving heavy and I don't like it. So Camille is coming to me, Cameron. Uh, Cameron, you and this chain and this open shirt is giving, follow me now because I'm a hot boy. <laughs> Baby, it's giving hot boy. Do you hear me? I don't know what's going on with it. You a doctor, but you dress like a rapper, honey. One of them Lil's. Lil Cameron. You know, they put them Lil's in front of everybody's name. So Zadia is explaining to him why Camille is there. Yeah, because it's going to need some explanation. And Cameron is like drinking out of her coffee cup. I said, baby, that's a little bit intimate, ain't it? Y'all wasn't doing no talking until that son came up and y'all ain't fooling me. So Camille jumps right in because he said he was a doctor. Camille is like, so how are you going to make time for a relationship? He said he wants to invest in like the next year or so so that he's free. Camille is also asking if he wants to move to D.C. He said he good on it because he does not like the snow. He's been there, done that, got the T-shirt. He likes to live in the South. He wants her to be open to moving to the South. The premise of the show is she's supposed to move there. But like I told y'all, ain't nobody moving nowhere. They just came to New Orleans because Tamika from New Orleans. So she's open she said zadia that is to moving to new orleans him not so much now i don't know why but i just cannot see zadia moving to new orleans i just can't see it i personally would not have invited camille with all those i love lucy faces she likes to make i just would have invited one of my sisters honey because camille would be acting a fool in the next scene liz and vernicia are going to meet jabari they come in he's already ordered drinks so Liz jumps right in. So he asked Liz where she was from. She was like, I'm from H-Town. I know that's right, honey. H-Town, stand up. She asked him what was his definition of success. What does it look like to him? He said a peaceful home, a happy home. That to him is success. I really did like that answer. I did. Because at the end of the day, it's as simple of, as having a roof over your head and having a happy and a healthy family. That really is the epitome of success. Because, I mean, you can just keep searching for stuff forever. But it's all about what you build and what you can keep. So I like that. She asked how he felt about a woman being a boss. Because we know Vernicia is a boss chick. He said, well, I feel like she needs to be able to turn this off after five. Because you ain't no boss at the house. Now, I don't think Vernicia liked that too tough, honey. Because she was looking like, what? Okay, I'm an entrepreneur. And I need you to know, Jabari, that being an entrepreneur is 24-7. It's not nine to five. I can tell that Vernicia is not going to like that because she does a lot with her business. She's been afforded several opportunities. I think she even worked on another season of Ready to Love or was it another show? It was some show on OWN where she was doing hair. She was like on set. So I don't know about the nine to five of it all, honey. She ain't Dolly Parton. Moving forward. Liz then asked him if he has an expectation of her stopping her business. He said, well, everybody know me. They know I'd be in bed by 9, 9, 30, 10 o'clock. And I've never really had that problem because my woman is usually home at that time. Yeah, uh-uh. Vernicia be outside with it. Okay, she be outside. So you snoring by 10 5, that ain't gonna work. Vernicia did say in her confessional, she was like, I like him, but I'm second guessing if he can handle me. I'm not sure that their views are going to align. Like he might try and dim her light. Plus he kind of boring a little bit. And I have been noticing it through the last couple of episodes like i told y'all i don't really like jabari's attitude on some things either because he seems a bit defensive because when he was in the confessional he was like i don't like this and i don't like that i'm just like sir this is a part of the program in the next scene lj and sharice are meeting fine keith hey keith <laughs> oh wait honey i was hoping she kept steve harvey so that keith could be free Ain't no feeling like being free. Honey, shout out to DC3. I really wanted her to let Keith go, but here we are. I guess it's for the betterment of Cherie, so I'm gonna let it slide. Now, I was down for keeping Keith until he started talking about a few things, and uh, I don't know, I'm not quite sold. So, LJ is asking about him. He says, you know, he's just a good guy. He likes to stay in the house, he don't bother nobody. He's a good guy. LJ then asked him about traveling because Sharice likes to get out and go and be out and about. He said, I took the last 25 years raising my sons. And so I'm doing me now. And then he says, y'all, I took my first solo trip just recently. 
They're all like, what? Where? Where? Where did you go? This man said Dallas. Um, sir, D Town Boogie back to the drawing board because that ain't gonna damn work. Even I would not want to go to just Dallas. That's down the street. I go to Dallas on a day trip. I used to always drive to San Antonio and Dallas to see my special friend and then come right on back home. <laughs> Baby, that's a story time. It's really a story time. Do y'all hear me? I used to drive on down there and then come right on back. Not Dallas, child. So then LJ's like, okay, Sharice likes to go on dates. She likes nice things. Where would you take her on a date? He said, you know, something simple, a walk and some ice cream. Sharice gonna try to catch Maurice at the light, baby. This ain't gonna work for her. Not being a Jerry and down to D-Town. Mm -mm, it ain't gonna work. I just feel like Keith is more settled and he just wants someone to grow old with. That's what I really think. And I hope that she does not let that deter her from getting to know him a little bit better. Because maybe some things can change. I mean, he didn't say he wouldn't travel. He just, you know, travels down I-45 for a quick getaway. It ain't going to work, though, ain't it? Yeah. <laughs> it ain't going to work. I'm trying. I'm really trying to help Keith, honey, but I don't think it's going to work. In the next scene, Ashley and Stormy, the DJ from season one. Ashley and Stormy are on their way to this date with Kirsten. Now, is it me or does Stormy look totally different and her persona is totally different than it was in season one? I know people evolve, but I don't remember her being this way in season one. So baby, Ashley was pissed before she even got to her seat. She was like, um, not Stormy being all dressed with her boobs all out and putting a bodycon dress on and whatnot. Girl, this date is for me, not for you. This is not ready to love. This is for Ashley to bust a move or make a move or whatever the hell I'm going to do, but it's not for you. Now, me personally, I feel like if you're secure, you won't be worried about her. I know I wouldn't because I'm going to give, honey, effortlessly. I just feel like if I'm stepping on the scene and I'm here for someone that's interested in me, I'm not worried about what the next person is doing. I'm really not. But Ashley, I think you probably are a little bit concerned because you're wearing that Selena bustier. Selena. <laughs> Anything for Selena's. That bustier that Ashley had on. And if I'm lying, I'm flying. That is that exact same bustier that Selena had on when she was doing that bitty bitty bum bum down at the Astrodome. I have watched that movie back and forth and forth and back more times than I care to remember. And every time. It comes on TV, just like Jackson 5, The American Dream. I'm going to watch it. That is that Selena Bustier. That's probably the problem, Ashley. You got that Bustier on. So, baby, Kirsten shows up. Now, when Kirsten showed up, he sat down and he was a little bit confused. So, the ladies are trying to explain to him, sir, this is not a triple date, okay? We're not a thruple. <laughs> you ain't that lucky. I'm just here to try to vet you for my girl. This is where he threw me off. And y'all can say that I'm overreacting, baby, but uh-uh. Something in the buttermilk ain't clean. He started it. This is where he threw me off talking about. He said, what is this? This is a surprise. I mean, it's a beautiful surprise, though. What that supposed to mean? All you should have sat down and said is, I'm ready for whatever y'all ready to throw at me. Not this is a beautiful surprise. So you're implying that Stormy is beautiful, and I don't like that. Okay, uh-uh. Something ain't right. So then Stormy is like, do you have a brother? Y'all kind of flirting a little bit. Now, see, I knew this was going to be an issue because the women choose the men. And what if you chose a man that really didn't want to choose you? But he got to play nice because he on this show. And Kirsten ain't fooling me. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. I don't like it. I do not like it. So she's like, how old are you? He said, I'm 38. She said, oh, you don't look it. So he starts asking her questions. Are you single? Y'all need to focus. Focus. Then he tells her, I'm going to hook you up with my brother. He's 6'5 and he's looking good just like me. Why does she need to be worried about if he looks like you? She shouldn't even be looking at you. Really and truly, she, she shouldn't even be talking to you about herself. Ashley is sitting over there like, um, hello, remember me? Like, what is happening? So then Ashley goes, I don't think he needs to know anything about her. This is about me, not about we. Like, why are you even saying anything to him about you being single? And I have to agree with Ashley. Now, I don't agree with Ashley on a lot. But I agree because I, I have not heard her ask one question to help Ashley out yet. What are you even doing? So he said, well, what are you drinking? Now, mind you, he not even talking to Ashley. Has not said one word to Ashley. He's looking directly at Stormy, honey. He's giving her. I'm speaking directly to you, honey, in person. 
He looks at Stormy and goes, well, what are you drinking? She said, I'm drinking Chardonnay. I'm trying to pretend to be classy. Well, baby, what she say that for? Ashley gets up and she's like, well, you know what? I'm just going to go and leave. She goes back there with the producer. She's like, look, I'm not feeling this. I feel like the third wheel. I'm not. It's just something about it. I'm not feeling it. I, I, he didn't even get up and go after her. nobody said sis are you going to the restroom are you coming back like what's wrong they still sitting there flirting stormy talking about you play all day you play too much you crazy you a trip y'all they were flirting okay i'm not even gonna hold you they were flirting and i do not know why you're not asking any questions about ashley but you're talking about yourself stormy over there acting like she looking for a date and i don't like that you asking about his brother means that you think that he looks good and you shouldn't be looking at him in that way. I would have walked out too because ma'am, get a grip. Like what the hell? Uh-uh, Stormy was a hard no for me, honey. Mm -mm. Moving forward. In the next scene, Zadia is going on another blind date with Dylan. Dylan is 31 and he's a teacher. They are definitely dressed for two different occasions. He's dressed for an interview and she's dressed, I don't know. She's just dressed casually, honey. I, I don't know it's just I don't know what he's dressed for but this isn't the occasion they sit down he has a lot of nervous energy and that kind of threw me off he's from New York but he just moved there he's an English teacher but he's dyslexic he's teaching fourth grade this is his first year he's a nervous wreck okay he really is so she was like he seems a little bit unsettled and I don't know if he's going to be able to keep up with my lifestyle being a teacher. Zadia, what exactly is your lifestyle? Because I ain't seen nothing that fabulous about you yet. What exactly is the lifestyle that he can't keep up with? Why can't you grow together? What's happening? I, I don't think it's going to work no way, child. Over on the other side, Sharice and Mizell are going on a date. This is her blind date. Now, she showed up ready for the gym and he is business casual. He got on his slacks, honey, his polo shirt, got his brown belt on. I was confused. He's a high school dean. So I was like, okay, this is the episode of The Educators. She liked the dancing date. But y'all, I know this might be an unpopular opinion, honey, but I felt it through the screen. He's giving me sketch. He really is giving sketch to me. I don't know. I was not feeling the vibe. Something about him just wasn't sitting right in my spirit. Back over with Zadia. She's still zadia -ing. She's asking him, where would he take her for another date? He said, oh, uh, I, would, I would take you like, you know, those art stores. She said, you mean galleries? I think Zadia is intimidating him and that will never work. She does come across as a man eater. I ain't gonna lie to you. Because when she sits down, her demeanor is not very inviting. Plus, she said every time she goes on a date, she thinks about Cameron okay well that can go on cue the theme music so you're ready to move how the theme music go <laughs> child all i know is ready to love how the theme music go y'all they can go on play the theme music because in the end she gonna choose cameron she ain't heard nothing past that how child dylan ain't it she would eat him alive do you hear me his nerves bad he calling a miss she telling him to guess her age this was just an epic fail. Now, quite frankly, I think that Dylan seems very nice. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think he's for Zadia. Maybe a date with Ashley would have been better. I think Dylan would have been better suited for Ashley. Back on Sharice's date, her and Ezel, what's his name? Mizell. My bad, sir. Her and Mizell, they're talking about their dogs and their signs and their names and their this and their that. These two dancing child is giving two left shoes. I mean, it was a cute date. But Mazel just gave me old school player vibes. It's just somebody. Just something about it. I don't trust it. In the next scene, Vernisha is going on a blind date with Tabari. Baby, it's the one to twin names for me. Tabari and Jabari. He's 47 and he's a realtor. He looks good to be 47. I said, he looks nice. Immediately upon going into his confessional, he complimented Vernisha. And I loved that. Let me tell you why. I have noticed that on every single date, they call Vernisha the homegirl or she's easy to talk to or something. I have not heard a man really compliment her. So the fact that he complimented her, that was major points for me. I've heard all the men compliment Sharice and a few men compliment Zadia and Ashley compliment every man. But I like the fact that he complimented Vernisha. That was nice to me. She deserves that. So they're going to be creating their own fragrance. I love it. Meanwhile, over on the other side of town, Ashley is going out with Christopher. He's 35 and he's an insurance agent. 
Um, it's a no on Christopher at first glance. And Chris, you ain't no dang on 35 and you ain't fooling me. Now, just looking at Christopher, I would pass. I, I just would pass because it, it, I don't know. It's just somebody. I would just pass. And y'all, after that last date and Stormy and Kirsten acting a fool, Ashley is a lot more subdued. Like she's really calm. I'm so used to her throwing out the compliments. I was shocked. I don't think she liked Christopher too tough because you know Ashley gonna compliment if she don't do nothing else. He did have her laughing though. He seems like if he were with Ashley, he would be all about Ashley. And for that, I like him. He's asking her her nickname and she said brown sugar. Brown sugar, babe. Honey, shout out to D'Angelo. His nickname is Box. He said they gave him that nickname in high school because of the shape of his head. All right, Boxhead, here we go. Back over with Vernicia and Bill Nye, the science guy, and that date, they're getting to know each other. He owns a radio station. He's a realtor. He manages a restaurant. Okay, I like this. I like that they both have the entrepreneurial spirit in common. He's going to understand her hectic lifestyle, and he will not try to hinder her or dim her light. I, I think Vernicia needs somebody that she can build an empire with. I think that's what she needs, and I just don't think Jabari will be able to give that to her. Back over with Ashley and Christopher, she asked Christopher when was his last relationship. This man said three or four months ago, and it was for three and a half years. Uh, it's a hell now nah for me, big dog. She's still playing on your phone, child. She's still watching your Instagram, probably watching this, trying to figure out, bye, ring. <laughs> uh-uh, uh-uh, it's too fresh. It's too fresh. And Ashley told him straight up, she said, uh-uh. You don't need to be on this date. You need to be healing. Now, again, I have to agree with Ashley. This is definitely a rebound situation. Not you applied for make a move because you done broke up with her for five minutes. Mm -mm, absolutely not. Moving forward. Back on Vernicia's date, her and her date had great chemistry. And he really wants to get to know her. In the battle of the Baris, I choose Tabari. Y'all comment down below and tell me who you choose. If it's out of Jabari and Tabari, I choose Tabari. And she told him, may the best man win. And I hope he does. In the last scene, Tamika is meeting with the ladies and their friends. So she goes around the room and asks them, you know, what went on on the dates. She asked Camille first if Cameron was a keeper. Camille said no. And that's basically because she does not want Zadia to leave D.C. She says Zadia needs someone that's going to have more time for her. Zadia said Camille has warned her in the past that certain men were not right for her and Camille was right. But basically she gonna do what she wanna do. And I was just wondering, I wonder if it was Naeem or was it Naeem? How do you pronounce his name? I think it's Naeem. I wonder if she warned Zadia about him. Camille's still making all those faces, I fear. Child, she's just over there making all these faces. I'm just like, oh child, let's move on. Moving forward. Y'all, I see Stormy isn't there with Ashley. Mm -mm, probably she probably out with Kirsten and they ain't fooling me next up is Vernicia so Tamika asked Liz what she thought about Jabari she said she thought Jabari was down to earth but she's concerned that he wouldn't be able to compromise she feels like he's a homebody and Vernicia deserves someone that won't stifle her Jabari is setting his ways that's what I think and he also seems like he has kind of a archaic mentality so I know that's not gonna mesh with Vernicia's personality it ain't gonna work over with lj he said that keith was nice he was cool for sharice you know him being simple will kind of balance her out but he felt like keith would get boring to sharice because sharice likes nice things and she likes to travel well girl go on call maurice back and sit there in silence for all the rest of your days tamika suggested that sometimes you have to take people out of their comfort zone i agree with that some men you know, you got to give him a little bit of a push. But at 51 years old, I think he said he's 50 or 51. I don't know about that, sis. Ain't nobody got time to be teaching him how to travel. LJ said it takes the right woman to bring things out of a man. I can see that. And I feel like maybe Keith is one of those people that would be receptive to what Sharice has to say. Because like I said, it's not that he doesn't want to travel. He just went down the street and came right back. I'm just saying. So baby, then she went over to Ashley. She said, Ashley, so Stormy went on your date. Ashley said, yeah, you said it right. I showed up for the date, but I wasn't on the date. Stormy went on my date with Kirsten. Ashley was pissed, honey. She couldn't even answer the questions good. She popped out a fan. She started fanning herself and whatnot. 
and seen. Uh, on Will Packard, ready to love, make a move, people, whoever. Why do we end on Ashley's cliffhangers every week? Don't get me wrong. Nothing wrong with Ashley, but at this point, what would the show be without her? Because for the past four episodes, we have ended with what is Ashley going to do? What is Ashley going to say? Like, what is happening? Ashley is the most interesting part of the season. And that was the end of the episode. Child, y'all comment down below and tell me exactly what you thought about the date with Stormy and Ashley. I'm sorry, I agree with Ashley. Stormy was team too much. She was flirting blatantly in front of Ashley. I didn't like that for her. Ashley is having a horrible time. I hope before the end of this process that Ashley finds someone that she can gel with. And Ashley, throw that bitty bitty bum bum top in the trash. Y'all comment down below and tell me exactly what you thought. Please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.